complete in a more complicated and complex drawing with ice magic circles um we're going to do this one today and it usually has a name but for today we're calling it a lever bracket or something of that sort some mechanical part right and we can see it has round edges here assessing the, the drawing itself it has round edges all around circles in the middle it has a shaft here with a hole right through it it has webs and spokes so these pieces are used for support so one here one is on the other side but you can't see it because it is in isometric then you will have another one here so to produce a drawing like this now you would start as we learned is that every isometric drawing is done within an isometric box so to form a circle you would first have to form the box which is the limit of the circuit circle and define the center lines because anything any drawing that takes into uh, any circular drawing that you're doing whether isometric or orthographic as long as you're drawing a circle you need to form center lines and from the center lines you use the radius to form the circle now the radius of this circle is this edge right here circular edge is 15 which means the diameter is 30 so the width across is 30 the height of this figure is six as we can see here six millimeters the arrow cannot fit within the space so it's on the outside so the arrow points on the limits of the measurement the from the center here of the entire object the to the center of the circle is 30 30 and the height of the drawing from the center of this circular feature here to this shaft at the top here is 44. now the arrows point to the outer inner extremities of the circles and tells you the information about the circle such as diameter so this outer one is 20 diameter this inner one is 12 diameter the width across here is 17 thickness 6 two holes at diameter 12 so this hole here and this hole here these two holes are 12 diameter which means 6 radius uh, this X here and the line that runs all the way down here shows you the center or the section of this joint which means that there is a line this is the center the line of in equilibrium but the XX is representative of sectional drawing uh, we will do that when we touch orthographic projection after we finish with uh, isometric we'll go to orthographic and start doing some more um, sectioning and other types of drawing so we're going to copy this picture and put it in again okay control v paste okay it's a bit big so we scale it down to a level and notice i drew it already so what i'm going to do now is demonstrate how i would arrive at this particular solution when it's plotted it looks like this so here we go start by drawing a box see i have all my layers set up layer properties so i have all my lines set up here so you can pause the screen to fix your layers but you wouldn't have to do this more than once why you just keep using the same drawing space that you used for all your work before or copy the one that you have already have already set up and uh, rename it and use it instead of setting up units and layers and all the parameters every time you're going to do a drawing just copy the work or do the work in the same same drawing setup that you have Right, moving along. So turn it that way. What is that? Um, thirty plus thirty. That's sixty plus fifteen and fifteen. That's ninety. It's ninety this way. Six that way.
You ain't gotta worry about a thing, girl. Heaven every time you let me go. I know you've been waiting for a king, girl. Oh, wait, no. My love goes strong. Eat there. Don't hurt me. So you trim as you go along so you don't get confused. With this eye, uh, yeah. First thing you want to do is establish your center line here, which is here, center. Change these lines to center line, select them. Center line. Um, it looks like center line from close up, but from far it is not. So what I do is select them, go to properties, and edit properties. Change line type scale from one to about ten. All right, so that looks more like it. So ellipse is end. The center here. Because it's not on the center, it's not on the top part here, it's on the base. So center. Wrong ellipse. Axis end. Ice a circle. F5. And the circle is um, 18 and 12. So our 18 are 12. 18. Oops. And as a circle. 12. <clears throat> completing the isometric box to get this circle over here. So I'd copy this to the back. <coughs> From there. Copy. Copy from center point one to center point two. Here. So you see that this comes forward a bit comes forward by six, which is the thickness up here. So this curve should is from this one. So you copy this backwards there. Six. Then what are we doing? Let's take a seat. Yeah, more of my different seat. A step back a little bit too.
So we are trying to trim out the extras that we have here that we don't really need. Uh -huh. So basically we just created this rounded piece and this three right piece there. So basically that's what we're doing. So we get the base of one, the rounded edges here and the rounded edges here now. So basically the radius of these are 15 diameter and 30. And they are 30 away from the center here. So we want to offset 30 that way and 30 that way. So we'll go boom from the center line. Measure 30 going that way. Measure 30, 30. Enter. So I get the center line there. I get the center line here as well. We'll come around 15 this way, 15 or 30. So 15 this way, 15, enter. So I'm basically I do is finding the, these center lines, right? And we can see that they are 30 away from this one to either step off 20, 30 from here to here or 15 from the edge inside. So you have that. So we're going to ellipse at this end. Ice circle, we send the point F5, right until the end. And then we can just copy from one place to the next, copy and paste this down here, right. And then we do the next one now, which is a small one inside. So we use the same center because all of them are the same center. Center here, form this and form this. So use the same center and do a circle that is 12 diameter, so six radius. So ellipse at this end. Same center. Uh, hold on, just did it run. Ellipse at this end. Ice a circle. The center line and type six. Enter. Then copy. Bring it down six. Type 6, which is the thickness, enter. So now I can, it looks a bit confusing, but now all we need to do is trim the extras. TR, enter. So we're not seeing these here, not seeing this here. Not seeing this here, not seeing this here, not seeing this, or this. So we can delete the extras now. Can you read the center line? No, not yet. Just turn it in the center line for now. Okay. Um, delete the extras. Mm -hmm. Trim. Get rid of the box on the exterior. Don't need that anymore. Yeah, it's a lot of takes before a lot of focus and a lot of um, attention. It's not easy work. We see that it's coming together now, and that's how you do it. But just to go back a little bit, function control Z is like undo. So just to undo this a bit, I'll reform the circles, and then instead of drawing them twice, I just copy everything from here and put it on the other side. Copy and place it here. There you go. So you can do the trimming now and get rid of everything together. TR and Okay. 
connect quadrant here, 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 here. If in some case you're not seeing these, make sure your object snap is on and your ISO draft. Now I can delete the extra things if I don't need. Again, we are enter. Z if we go back. So basically, can't jump up here now. All right, I can delete the center lines for now because they may make the drawing a bit confusing. So I get rid of the center lines. Trim here. Those man sometimes feel like the richest man in Babylon. All right, so now that we have the base, if we take a look at it. It seems like everything is okay, but we want to come up here now. So these pieces, because they're at an angle, we don't know what angle they are, so we don't draw these just yet. You leave these for last. Anything that is at an angle in isometric, you leave it for last. Remember we talked about that all the time. You don't have the angle I already mentioned for it, leave it for last. What we do have is the height measurement from here to here. So we'll come all the way up here and step back to get the full measurement. So we know that the full width is 30 based on the radius, this radius and diameter. So radius. 15 plus 15, 30. So we understand that this is 17. So it's 17 minus 30, which leaves us um, 13, two from 15 is 13. So we leave us 13 going from here to the center point here would be 13. So we come all the way up to 44, then go back 13, and then find that center, then start drawing this circle, then connect both of them. So that's what we'll do. So we go from here, upwards 44, from here, you go up 44, ensure that it's straight, it's a 90 degree angle. So let's go up 44, enter, then go backwards 30, 13, 13, enter. And that's your center point for here. See, up 44 from the center, up 44, then go backwards 13. The, major, the full width is 30, so you minus 17 from 30. 30, you get 13 here. So you start drawing your circles now. Iso ellipse axis end, iso circle. From this center point, I draw my front circle. And that circle is, one of them is diameter 12, which is 6 radius. Enter. And then one is 
diameter 20, which is 10. That's a circle. And 10. Enter. Then this goes back 17, so you, from here, this center, you draw another line going back 17. 17. Enter. And notice how I'm using my center points, because centers is what you use to get circle. You copy from here, bring it back to 17. Then you connect them using the quadrant. Quadrant. And again, how I know this is quadrant, I can see it here. Quadrant here, this one. So I'll trim out the extras. DR, enter. Okay. And now I am able to connect here to here by doing tangency. So from this point here, which is here, I'll connect up here to a tangent. Boom. There is tangent. Tangent right there. So you're applying all the principles that you'd have learned in fourth form are doing geometric drawing. However, you're applying it in different ways. Now, because there is no circle here, I don't know where to connect it to. So I need to step off this thickness for this circle. So this curve, I need to offset it by actually by six six millimeters right so what i'll do is six from 17 is so this is 17 right so this measurement here would be 11 now this would be six so i can offset this circle by 11 so copy move from the center move it backwards and type 11 enter and that's where i can draw this from here now and get a tangent here you need a circle to get the tangent and now that you have this circle on there you can trim it out trim enter and trim here and here All right and here and that's it that's what you get there good now that we have there we can delete this one because this one is not necessary anymore Right. This one too. So basically now all we need to draw is this one here. So it's six from the center, so we can know that is three on this side and three on this side going here. So what we'll do is follow it all the way up. So from here, come down with the center line. And meet it with this one. So it follows this path all the way down. Now what we need to do is step off three that way, three that way. So basically, what we we'll do is step off three, enter. Step off three this way, three, enter. Come down. The same thing here. Three. Enter. Go that way. Three. Enter. Go that way. So now that we have them, we can just connect from here to here and here to there to form it. So we're making, making, basically making like a triangle. Connect to that point. Connect it to that point right here. And that's how we form it. Now we can delete this, these extra lines that we use to get it. They're the center lines. And extend to these round curve EX. Because they are not touching so far, so we want them to touch, so extend. It goes right up to it. Okay. I can do that again. So 
Control Z, go back, select what I want it to touch first, the two curves, then type extend, and then click on the lines that I want to go up there, and they go exactly where I want to extend. Good. I can delete these extra ones. So you have several ways you can get this done. You don't have to necessarily use the same procedure that I use. However, uh, whatever way you use to do it, it should be accurate. And then I get this line, which is this line here, going backwards to there. So, 30 degree angle, boom, and then trim. So I trim that right there, and then tap that right there. And from here, I go all the way up to here, 90 degrees. Trim here. Mm -hmm. So that is that. What are we missing? Oh, this line under here. So you come under here. That's it. Let's see what I've got missing. Uh -huh. Thing looks good. Oh, this piece right here missing. Therefore, what we do for this piece here is find a tangent quadrant and go backwards a bit. Boom. And that's it. How to get makes life simple. Uh -huh. and that's you. And we're done. Basically. So this is basically what you're drawing. But to get the annotations now, this is another lesson when I'll teach you how to do dimensions and annotations. But for now, this is where we stop and this is what you would submit to me. So basically, I'll change these lines now to object line. Change them to object line so they can become thick. And the reason why you're seeing them like this is because I have my line weight on. If I turn it off, it's gone. Alright? Line weight. Basically, I'm gonna match properties MA mean getting the others like this, like painting the other lines. So, to do match properties, I select one, type match properties, and then select the others. And that's basically how we'll go about getting that done. Alright, so I can fix the other center lines now from here. Outwards. Go out of your way if you hurt me. So, my properties again. Okay. And change the properties again, select all them, make them a little bit smaller so they are more visible, like the line that scale. The properties change line scale to about five, that looks good. Good, the center line stops right here. MA, enter. 
And that's it. For now. Um, some other time, we'll go back to this join and and put annotations on it. Annotations are these dimensions and lines and symbols. So another time, we'll, I'll teach you how to put these on your join. But this is what you'll submit for now. You copy this, put it inside your border, and submit it as your isometric join. What you do. Another thing, what you can do is block it. To block it, you make the all the join one component, right? So you select everything, type B L O C K, enter, and type ISO block or whatever name you want to give your join. Okay, redefine, yes, and it becomes one. So every time you select it, it is one join, it doesn't separate anymore. Then you can scale it. And allow it to become bigger. Copy this sheet. Copy. Name, copy. All right, change name to ISO block. Double click to edit. Caps, all caps, all time. Chooser isometric block change the date, change the information. Okay, then boom, you can scale this SC, enter R reference and scale it. Boom, then put it here. Good. And that's you. You can submit this. Now you see an explode. To get it back into join, you can explode it by clicking here. This is explode. Or you can type explode. 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 It breaks it apart again. So all the lines become individual. Now that I explode it, I can now change what this to 10 because it's bigger, so I want a bigger scale. Much more with this. M A. Alright, so I will plot this now. Monochrome CTB, quality custom, A3 paper, top A3, there, window, stack over the sheet, and preview. And that would be your submission, that would be the join that you submit to me. This exactly try. Good. Name, all the information. Okay.